Hi, uh, my name's Iamar Hurrings. I'm the lead consultant at Hurrings Consultancy. We're a management consultancy which helps law firms with uh, their businesses. Uh, we do a lot of work with the lead case management system. Uh, and this time I want to record a little video going through the basics of creating precedent. So you can create your own precedent letters, etc. So I'm going to share my screen. Go to my training data set. I'm going to find a matter. That one will do. And it takes you into details and correspondence. It's from this screen you want to go to the forms and precedence area. Okay. Now, anything in the forms and precedence area can be accessed through any of the other matters in your loop. It will default to generator, uh, but go to browse, which is the native leap area. And you'll see in here folders and this being an agreement matter with open automatically to the environment area, but you can choose where you put your folders. You can't remove any of these, what I call header folders. You can't add any header folders, but you can put in sub folders. So usually firms who we've implemented, they'll know that when I'm training on this, put a folder in under practice management because it's not my job to choose where the subfolders go. That's for you. So you choose where it is that you want to put them. And we've got one under here called Hermes Law Precedents. Okay. So if we go to here, there it is. But to create a folder, you go right click and you go folder. And then you give it a name. So let's call it training folder because I'm training. Okay. And that will then appear in a couple of uh, seconds. Uh, you'll see if you look very hard, it's a slightly different color. It's slightly blue. So Meek knows not to touch it when it's updating its software. It's your stuff, not theirs. Okay. Now, if I double left click, I can go in here and I can right click. I could create other folders. Should I wish to, you can create subfolders and sub some folders, etc. The simplest way to get something in is just by right click and import precedent. That will take you to your file explorer. And so you could bring in what is in your file explorer into your leak, which means that whatever is in there, you can access through in matter. That'll appear in a moment and you'll see as guidance that I got from my accountant on uh, charging and uh, a on services. You can right click and rename it if you wish to. Let's take off the word copy from there. Okay. Now that's straightforward. The trouble with that is that what you bring in is exactly what you bring in, exactly what you had before. It's got no coding in to draw any data from any matter. Now you could uh, right click and edit the precedent by adding it in. But if you wanted to um, put a precedent letter in, then your uh, implementation consultant would have built for you a letter template or document type, Leap calls it, based around your style, which you're using at the moment, I imagine. So you don't want to have to redo all the raj and put all the coding in because you've already got that there. So what Leap does is give you a certain amount of automation. So this is what I'd recommend you do. Right click new, and then you choose Word or Excel precedent. You can create precedent emails as well, but I'm going to focus on the letter for the moment. New Word or Excel precedent. And then in here, you're selecting, you're giving deep instructions as to where it should go to build or assemble your uh, precedent. So here we'll pick the letter template or document type. And then here you're picking the recipient where they should be looking at the card from which it will draw uh, the data. Okay. So letter to client would be up here. Client's always at the top, whatever, whatever they're called on a particular matter, buyer, seller, claimant, respondent, employer, employee, whatever. So that would be letter to client. Letter to employment tribunal, there we go, letter to mediator would work, but on this matter, there's no card next to the role of mediator. So we've got no one showing here. So if we were to do this, we wouldn't have the reassurance of seeing during the process the recipient's details coming up, but the precedent would work. 
obviously, if you pick a matter to use for the creation of the precedent, which is of a different matter type to what your letter should relate, then it's not going to help you particularly. So try and pick a family matter for a family precedent, a probate matter for a probate precedent, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, here I'm going to do letter to client, OK. And what it's going to do now is go to Microsoft Word. And it's going to uh, bring up um, my letter template. And it's building that at the moment. Always let Word finish what it's doing. It's updated and documented. If you interrupt it while it's doing that, often Word gets angry. OK, so here we go. Ready for us to either type or copy and paste thing, the precedent wording. The precedent wording is what goes in here, in this area here. The rest of this below and above is your letter template or, or document type, which has already got lots of coding in or brilliant inclination. Okay. Then you go save and close. And Leek says, okay, what do you want to call this? So you give it a name. I'm going to call it letter to Briage Baroch. There we go. And that's going to appear there in a moment. And I notice I didn't put capital letters so I can then rename it in here. Right. Give it the capital L in there. Fine. It will catch up. It's syncing with the internet at the moment. That's why it's taking a moment to do that, but it will show in just a moment. Maybe. Right. Okay. Now that can be accessed through any matter and it will pull in the recipient's details, the recipient we chose with the client for that relevant matter. Brilliant. If you want to amend it, well, we've got all these options here, that's fine. But if we want to run it, that would just bring up the document and then you could amend that instance of it. And that's fine, but it doesn't amend the precedent. If you want to amend the precedent, right click here and edit precedent. Now that's going to open this up in Word. Okay. Just wait for that to open up properly. Sometimes you'll see it say precedent in capital letters up there, just to remind you. Now a tip for you, which I've learned through painful experience, when you're working with precedents, I always show these brackets. They're called bookmarks. It's a word thing. Microsoft Word needs to have both the first, the beginning and the end bookmarks to know where to insert your precedent wording. If one of these were to be deleted, then Word can't do that and your precedent won't work. To show these on the leap ribbon, you go to the little arrow here and you see you get the option to show the bookmarks. So I always have these on because I'm working often with precedents for firms. If they're not showing, which is the default on the computer, it looks like this. And if you had an extra line of space put in where you've imported the data, then you may be tempted to delete the second bookmark, which would stop your precedent from working. So my recommendation is that you always show these in here. Let me know to read at that point. Now then, you're going to get most of your precedent, sorry, your efficiency gains for putting in the precedent wording. And you have all the word functionality you would normally expect because it's word in here. So you can make it pretty colors and bold and underlined and all that sort of stuff in there. But you can also add in coding. And it's the same toolkit that Leap and I use when we're working with Leap. So you have here on the Leap ribbon, this toolbox. And if we go to the drop down, you see, you can toggle the field name. So you can see in here, I know all the coding that's being put in, but you also have the ability to insert fields. And that opens up on the right hand side of the screen, a library of fields that you can put in. Uh, now the, there are hundreds, if not thousands of fields within your leaf that you could be importing into your word documents. This is a word thing, by the way. What you see is driven by the matter you chose. Okay. So if we wanted to have family options, then I should have chosen the family matter, for example. But there are, I could give you some sort of guidance to get going with this at least, but there's no real shortcut to playing with this. Matter is the matter details screen. 
And so put the cursor where you want the data to be uh, inserted. You're going to find, for example, the person acting full name. So my client, my, my member of staff, Mr. Not So Helpful, I can double left click and you see it brought the name in, but it's actually just brought some coding in on this matter. Mr. Not So Helpful is the client. But if I were to, let's say, bring lead to the front and change from the matter details screen, the person. So let's say it's uh, Mr. A, a test thing is now the Theana or the person acting. And then if I let's move that over the way update, then you'll see it's read my file and it's brought through the relevant data from the matter. So this is an empty link to bring through from that particular field, the data that we've mapped it to do now. Okay. What happens if I want to bring through my client's name? That's possible. Sometimes it may be the client. Sometimes it may be the role that performing at the claim at the employee or whatever you but I'm going to bring through the client. Now, whether wherever is a contact you have within the search field here, we have ability to put in the word full, which means you can say full name, any use. And it's bringing my client, Mr. Lazy Bones on this matter. It's bringing his data through. There we go. Lazy. So now these things you can, of course, make them bolder and aligned and all the other word functionality in the model. entirely up to you. Anyway, there's Mr. Lazy Bones. And, and now that's brought in the client's full name. So an example is you could be creating a precedent matter to request medical records. And you want to, the letter to bring in the client's name in there. Now, when I'm working with precedents, I'm often and coding, I'm often toggling to see that I can get out of the coding bit more typing some more. Okay. So let's untoggle that. Let's say her is date of the book is, and let's see if they add, we have a date of birth on Mr. Lazy Bone. So date of birth, we do. Okay. So let's put that in there. And there you've got the data has been mapped through. Now it could be that you don't like the format. It's the correct data, but you don't like the format. So what you can do is left click and drag across to highlight the field. And then under editing, you have format as an option. So you can format the fields. And then it's dates in different formats, numbers. So you can go into uh, currency or what have you. I'll format this into uh, ordinal just so you can see that in there. So you've got those options there and that's a starter guide really to playing around with the uh, precedence and also then with the coding. When you've done all this, do you save and close and leave will ask you, what did you do? So and it's some codes. Normally I would suggest you do a file that's a description and that the reason why is because when you get into here, what you can do is right click history of changes and see what changes were made by who by whom at the particular time, and you've got the better the description, you've got the better it helps you understand. Okay. Now then, if you want, instead of that, to change your core letter template, we saw it there, but we can't do anything with it because here, all we're doing is mapping what leap should do. If you want to change your core letter template, you don't do it through here. And this is for the precedence. The precedents will use the core letter template or document type, which you can access through new document up here. There it is. And that's where you might go to do a blank letter to someone. But if you right click on it here, you can edit your core letter template. Obviously you do that with great care because all of your precedents use that. So what I would recommend is don't revert to standard. Okay. Because what that will do is with the history of changes, take it right back to something which is pretty unusable. Okay. So you really want, you know, you do this with great care. Now this area where it has document types, you want to have as few core document types as you can get away with, but as many as you need, you should not have loads and loads of items in here because it's not got the functionality to deal with it because if you've got loads and loads in here, you're probably putting precedence in there and the precedence should go into the forms and precedence where you've got far more functionality and the precedence 
use the core document types that you've got in here. Okay, I hope that's of help. And that's the end of what I wanted to cover with regard to the starter guide on using and creating precedents within Leap. So just to remind you, we are Alice Consultancy. We provide management consultancy for law firms, helping them with systems or client support and other things in here. We do implementations on LEAP. We do a lot of support and assistance for other training, new starter training, training on precedents, et cetera, et cetera. We can help with precedents, work clearing, and such like. We do have on our YouTube channel a whole playlist of videos to help you with your LEAP. So Honey's Consultancy search with our YouTube, please subscribe. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. And I wish you a good day.